Okay, uh, thanks um, for coming in um, and uh, welcome to um, uh, sunny, South, sunny Southland. Uh, you'll get a little bit of sun and rain and sleet today, um, but that's no different from anywhere else in the country, so don't worry about that. Uh, so before I go on too much further, I might, I'll invite Feng Fernanda up from um, Naitahu um, to actually just open um, the meeting symposium. Kia ora tato. Ahara mai tau tu mai ki rongi tēnei kaupapo tātou, a ke whiti whiti kōrero uh, mō mātou mō ngā uri e muri aki nei. Um, ka tuki a hui tō tātou whakaro ki te atua, uh, nā nei hō mai nā mea katoa ki i te tīmatanga na whakamutunga, uh, nā rei te atua, whakatau tō rangi māre ki rongi e tēnei huhu o tātou. Uh, nā rei, ka tuka hoki ki a mihi atu ki tō tātou mate ki rongi au koutou, mauri e mai e nei ki a hono ki nā mate o tēnei taha katangi hea, a poroporo aki hea, nga ka tuka ka mihi atu ki a rātou kua huri tuara ki a mātou. Anei, uh, ki te kaupapa o te rā nei, he kaupapa tino nui, um, ki te tiaki tō tātou uh, whenua tai ao mō mātou, uh, mō ngā uri whakatupu. Nga rea, nō hea, nō hea, hara mai, hara mai, whakatau mai, uh, ki rongi tēnei whenua tātou ko Murihuku, um, he honore mō mātou, te hau kāinga, uh, kaitau kā te mamo e waitaha, e pohi tia i a koutou, uh, ki rongia i tēnei whenua. Nga reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou. I just um, Dean Fanga um, from Naitahu, and I live at Bluffy, just down the road if you haven't been there. But um, yeah, I'd just like to welcome everybody uh, along with Graham and Environment South and uh, to you all here. Uh, whether you have travelled from afar or nearby, welcome, welcome, welcome. It gives me great pleasure to support this welcome to you all. Um, and Environment South has undertaken a number of science programmes over the last four years, which we will be sh which we showcase today. And resilience, as Graham talked about, is a word we will hear a lot about today. One must be resilient to live in Southland due to the extreme heat waves we experience here in the South. So one thing you, you may have noticed about us Southlanders is that uh, when we go outside, we always put on a jacket just in case the smallest change in weather or if it looks a bit unkind. So just remember that if you try to sneak outside, don't forget to put your jacket on. Our theme is uh, ev evolution of knowledge and resilience thinking. So it means to be pr provocative and bring out some strong discussion. So, uh, you know, get stuck in and um, be provocative. I'd really like to acknowledge our science team from Environment South and um, Te Tonga Taiao. They've always, been great they've always been great people working there. And um, we as Tangata Whenua have been very fortunate uh, to work alongside them, uh, to be informed by them and be provided with opportunities to participate with them and we have regular catch-ups, so this is a big mihi to our science team. Not just with Environment Southland, but there's other TAs here as well, and they've got fantastic science teams too that we have the opportunity to work with as tangata whenua. So science, both Western and Māori, is something we openly discuss with the uh, TAs and um, Environment Southland, and <coughs> these synergies are noted and incorporated in our combined thinking going forward. So I really hope this day is enjoyable to you all, um, that through your food basket and my food basket, the guests will be fed, which sort of means um, for your and our joint thinking, our challenges can be surmounted. And the one saying that I'd just like to mention is that um, uh, Komatoa Mind says, our greatest weapon is our mind. So I'll leave you with that one. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Kia ora, Dean. <coughs> uh, tēnā koutou katoa. Uh, ko Araki te Moonga, ko Upi te Awa, ko Pākia tōku iwi, nō Timaru Aho, ko Graham Civic Jones tōku ngoa. Kei te mahi o iti tāua tonga. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. So, um, thanks very much, Dean, for the uh, opening the um, session. Uh, I've got some housekeeping notes here. Uh, I should be able to remember most of these. Um, toilets often handy, um, down at the far end, so go out to the door and straight down the end. Some of you may have already found them, um, but they are there. Uh, and one thing to notice, this, sort of, this building here has got lots of really fascinating things about it, and um, certainly the, they've done some really interesting things around the theme of transport, and the toilets is no exception. 
uh, emergency exits, uh, to follow the signs that we highlighted and meet out the, out the front, I think across the road, um, to um, if there is an emergency. Um, this is a very new building, so it's up to a good standard. <laughs> uh, the breakout rooms are down the corridor to your right, um, so where you are around where you're having our morning tea, uh, instead of turning left right down here, you go straight ahead, um, so those are the breakout rooms. Uh, I'd like to also thank a number of people, um, especially uh, Janet um, for putting a lot of the presentations that together. Uh, Ned um, has been uh, instrumental in helping pull us together, uh, especially uh, Karen in front here who has been driving most of this. Uh, and um, there's panel members, there's, an awful, there's a number of staff here that are involved in the presentations. Um, and there's a lot of our, of our partners. Um, this science program has been a result of many uh, people. So even though it's the, the people today will be presenting uh, generally from Environment Southland, um, what's just behind them is um, dozens and dozens of other scientists and organisations. So I really appreciate the, the uh, effort that's put in. I'd like to thank uh, Jane Kitson, um, who's giving a talk tonight. <laughs> Uh, and our councillors, so welcome to the councillors that have been able to turn up today. Okay, if you want to tour the museum between today and dinner, um, in the breakout rooms there's a sheet there to put your name down on, um, and that allows you to, uh, to access it during those periods. Uh, drinks will start at 6.30 tonight for the dinner, and dinner's at 7. Um, and finding the room we're having dinner might be part of the fun. I'm not exactly sure it is. Um, it's in here. <laughs> uh, you'll have seen there's an information package um, with you, but uh, this work, there's posters out there, there's a bibliography of what the presentations are, and there's a lot of this, all this work will be available online. So if you want to go to our website to actually look at this in more detail, it'll be there. This is really just a snapshot of what we've done. Uh, as you can expect with most science programs that have um, developed over four years, what you see is um, only a, a tip of the, the iceberg of information that sits below that. And also there's a lot of other information that comes in from our partners um, and the knowledge from this region. Uh, right. Last thing is, um, yeah, for tonight, I um, just need to take everything away with you. I know we've got a, another workshop here on, on a it's called Southland Science Inc, which is a, work, a, a group that's been working over the last um, 12, 12, 18 months, so um, they're going to be meeting here tomorrow. So some of you may be involved in that, um, so, but just be aware that you'll need to take away your uh, um, um, information and stuff today. Okay. Now I get to talk <coughs> again. <coughs> um, so yeah, any questions, there's um, people with the pink lanyards that are there, just um, if you're not sure about something, uh, just tackle them, literally. <laughs> okay, so what we've come, what we've pulled together is actually uh, uh, we're going to celebrate the completion of our four-year science program. This is really the start of it. Uh, the more we talk about this, the more we realise that there's so much more to do. Um, there's so much more we don't know, um, and there's a lot of information held within the communities that need to be brought back into that. Mm -hmm. And we want, we're wanting to work much closer with our EU partners around this as well, um, because we recognise that different world views bring together different knowledges that we can use. So we want to showcase our work and how it um, provides a resource to be used by generations to come, so it's not just about the information presented for our purpose, it's actually there for long term, and so this builds on the knowledges that already exist out there. Uh, the other aspect is, um, um, what I've got to mention before, um, Te Taurakura Wumarahiku is our new vision for the um, region and it's about a thriving Southland. And so <coughs> why we do this is that there's um, you know, huge uh, richness within this region of um, you know, terrestrial, aquatic um, and social uh, values. Um, the culture has a really uh, deep component within Southland and um, we wanted to bring out this as much as we can to actually be able to inform all the future future states that we might want. <coughs> You'll hear me saying this a bit 
um, over the next um, few slides. Um, but Te Tairakira o Marahiku is, is, a, is a part of a, a program that the council's been working on for about the last 12 months, redeveloping a strategy to actually better reflect uh, what it is that um, Southland, um, Southland wants. And so this is uh, not just about the present, but it's actually the future. Um, the people we talk to in the communities and that um, all acknowledge that we want a thriving Southland, and that means many things to many different people. And it's certainly not just the biophysical component, there's the social and cultural components of that that are really um, important to actually recognise. And to enable that, um, we've come up with our, uh, the council's come up with their version of what a uh, thriving Southland would look like 10 years from now. So we firmly believe that we'll actually just be a cartoon in 10 years' time. <laughs> <coughs> and uh, it's one of those pictures that when you start looking at it, you get really engrossed in it and you actually start, um, well, most of the people at work were starting to try and find real Wally. Um, I think Wally may be in there. Uh, but it's recognition that 10 years time, um, there'll be a lot of change, but a lot of things will remain the same. Um, but it, it re also recognises the, the richness that Southland has and the landscape, uh, the people, and the values within those, within those communities is really important to recognise. And uh, we're in the tropical south. <coughs> and it will continue to be tropical into the future. And it's the diversity and richness of our environment and um, people is, really needs to be recognised. <coughs> and to that end, we have actually also looked at what are the outcomes um, that uh, we believe are actually needed to actually achieve those, those long-term visions of a thriving Southland. So within each one of those, they do depart a bit from what you may see uh, in other regions. Um, we've looked at uh, sort of the broader pictures of, of things. So managed access to quality natural resources. Within there, there's actually the, we need to ensure that the quality of our resources is either maintained or improved and meets what Southland actually um, requires for to be, be that thriving component. We recognise that all these are interconnected as well. So these, uh, outcomes are not just um, to be seen in isolation from each other. Uh, it's very well recognised now that if you're talking to anybody in the community, they know that everything is connected to each to each other. So how that actually manifests itself um, from a science perspective is something that we, we often struggle with because we're really used to going into detail about one particular item. So it's being able to bring that back. So these outcomes from a science perspective actually are very useful uh, to actually give us that bigger picture as to where this will fit in and how it actually will make a difference. <coughs> we recognise that we need uh, diverse opportunities to make a living, so not just tracking down one particular uh, sort of industry or agricultural type, there needs to be a diversity within the landscape to actually give you that resilience into the future um, so that you have different um, sort of economic pathways and opportunities to actually enhance Southland and the people that are within that. Also through the information we have, we want to actually ensure that the communities are em empowered and that they use this information in a variety of ways <coughs> to actually enhance their ability to improve what we see within in Southland from what it is now. And the other component that came through strongly in uh, revisioning um, the council's purpose was around communities expressing their diversity. So we had a long think about, do we just mean cultural diversity in this, or was it actually a range of diversities? And we eventually landed on, actually recognises that there's a range of diversities within Southland that need to be recognised. And if we don't actually pay attention to that, then we tend to go down um, our linear paths. Two programmes or two areas of work um, that I'll talk a little bit about. Uh, we've started developing a People Water Land program and Bonnie Lawrence, somewhere in the audience there, um, is our program manager for that. And um, that's one area that's going to actually help integrate a lot of the work we do. The other uh, area I'll talk about is the Southland Science Inc. And I mentioned that a little bit before, um, but that's actually an initiative that uh, Regional Council has put together to to see how we may be able to do science differently in this region. In regard to people with a land, uh, it's, at the moment um, there's sort of three components we're working with. Um, action on the ground, um, providing 
the information and the ability to make differences on the ground here and now. You'll see often uh, that what happens is that you go through a long planning process and that may um, involve regulation or it may not, but at the end of that then you start implementing. And depending on those processes it can take seven or eight years and by that stage you're actually ready to review it again. So you never necessarily progress. So we recognised that and wanted to make sure that we actually are uh, looking at what on-ground actions are needed to actually lift uh, the performance in many areas to, to a state that actually is uh, what the communities and the people of Southland want. And with, in that we're setting it out on a values and objectives um, process and Rachel's actually um, <coughs> leading um, uh, that component and that's really about setting the direction for it. So as well as the action occurring on the ground at the moment we're also looking at what are the future directions that need to be um, um, steered towards. So it's actually providing an ability to actually start doing things without actually waiting longer term. Um, and if you're involved in science, you'll always see that there's always another question out there in the future that you're trying to actually answer. So we're wanting to try and ensure that the knowledge is actually built with people as we're actually working, working forward. Uh, one of the other components of this is a regional forum is in the uh, initiation stage. So we're looking at um, what will be the goal goalposts that we'll define. And this regional forum, as I said, it's just in its uh, initiation at the moment and it'll be looking at what will the makeup of that be to actually ensure that the Southland is best represented to move into the limit setting processes that are required under the National Policy Statement for Freshwater Management. Uh, the other part we recognise there is that establishing a forum is uh, a one component of a very complex network of social interactions that will have to take place. So um, we don't want to leave behind the other communities and the people that will need to be connected to that. So we're having, trying to give a lot of thought into that and how that will actually play out. Southland Science Inc. Um, I think it's about 18 months ago. we had an idea that uh, we needed to review our science strategy for Environment Southland. And within a very short time, we started thinking that actually maybe it should be broader than that. So we brought a group of uh, people together, um, other science uh, <coughs> providers, stakeholders, and um, key uh, interests um, and other organisations to actually explore, could we actually look at this a bit bigger? And um, what what evolved from that was the recognition that the science strategy shouldn't just be for Environment Southland, it should actually be for Southland. And so it, we're working through a process at the moment of identifying what that may look like. And we've got a, a lot of partners that we work with and what we're wanting to establish is that there's a, a thing called our data. We all actually um, acknowledge the limitations of it, um, the benefits of it, and we have that as a stable platform. From that there's an interpretation analysis that each organisation may need to take for their purposes but it, at the base level there is actually a provision of a knowledge um, that actually is able to provide less contentiousness around things. We can identify the gaps that actually are, are real priorities for not only um, from a council perspective but from a community perspective or from a um, other interested organisation perspective. Uh, we're very uh, aware that uh, this actually has to be in partnership with uh, our, our local iwi and we've been um, uh, working on, on firming up how that partnership would look through, partly through this process and certainly with the People with Land Programme which is actually a, a joint programme between um, uh, Maitahu and uh, Regional Council. An interesting thing you see in these photos is that uh, we seem to partition ourselves from gender. So you have male tables and female tables for some reason. <coughs> so that sort of brings me back to our future as a cartoon. Uh, and uh, I think it's really, I think there's a few of those floating around, but it's really good to actually look through the posters and that we have here to actually get a picture of what Southland actually looks like from, from a science perspective, but also this picture of what it looks like from um, uh, more of a, uh, a, a ground perspective, what, what people see actually are, are relevant and, and pertinent to our region. So with that, um, I will actually hand over to Rachel. <coughs>
I almost forgot people's names. <laughs> uh, Rachel was just recently <coughs> moved position, so she's um, now um, uh, involved in running the strategy and partnerships um, program. Um, so she's going to give the talk around the next um, few slides around the evolution of knowledge. And the position that Rachel vacated um, has just recently been filled, and uh, Dr. Elaine Moriarty, who's um, trying to hide, <laughs> um, has recently accepted that rep role. So um, we're, <coughs> we're stealing from CRIs. Was a good thing. Um, so, Rachel. Tina Koto, Tina Koto, Tina Koto Katoa. There's a saying that many of you have profitably heard that if you're doing the same thing, and time goes on and you're still doing it exactly the same, you should have a close look. That's if you go, say, two years and you're still doing it the same. If you go five years and you haven't changed it, you should be pretty suspicious. And if you go ten years and you're still doing it the same way, you should throw that out and start again. Uh, as Graham said, I'm Rachel Miller, um, Strategy and Partnerships Advisor with Environment Southland. And it was my privilege to be part of the science team during the duration of the science program. You'll be pleased to know that the work that we do at Environment Southland does not need to be thrown out, uh, nor does it even look, need to be looked at with, with suspicion because it is continually evolving and changing. I actually started with Environment Southland <coughs> a while ago in the early 2000s, and at that time we'd just done our first State of the Environment report. There were a couple of scientists floating around, but not as many as there are today. And we'd obviously built on the knowledge that had been gained through human settlement, both um, Maori and European settlement. We had um, that first State of the Environment report and networks were expanding. Over time, we came to do more and more investigations. Um, but for the last four years, we've really stepped it up a notch and there's been a big investment in the work that we've been doing, and that's what I'd like to talk about today. An overview of the last four years, the work the team has done, and give you a feel for the sense of, give you a feel for the direction going forward. So this is basically an overview of what I will be talking about. Um, so we're going to start by looking at the connections um, between land, water, air and people. Um, before considering the evolution that's occurred um, in all the different disciplines covered by our science programme, our Southland Economic Project um, within the biodiversity and air quality space as well. Uh, then I'll talk about how we've been integrating those disciplines um, before moving on to the symposium themes of value change and people. So I just said everything's connected and I would really like to highlight today the um, connection between people and the landscape. And to do that I've chosen to include a few personal photos. So what you can see in uh, these um, photos is my connection with the Southland <coughs> landscape. I grew up on a sheep farm in central Southland and lo and behold I still live on a sheep farm in central Southland but it's about half an hour's uh, distance between the two properties. So the photo here is on the top of the property that I grew up on as a child, and you may be able to see, it hasn't come up very clearly, but the Takatimu Mountains are in the background, so they are um, my mountains, and I can still see them um, on the property that I live on now. The Makariwa is uh, the Awa, that um, I spent the most time in as a child. So um, hunting for eels, poking around in the, the little creeks and tributaries as well, getting out in the summer swimming and rafting down that waterway. And we have very similar waterways on our property here, um, that's at Otahuti, which is about half an hour from town. And currently we, we moved onto the property about a year ago, fencing those off and riparian planting, but my children like to get in and poke around those creeks and streams as well. 
Actually, my first introduction to the catchment that I live in now, the Waimatuku, was going out and white baiting with my grandfather out at the mouth, and that's a practice that many Southlanders do. Uh, these last shots are of my family up in Tianao. I think it was late May, so here we've got our jackets on, keeping warm, but that is um, an activity that many Southlanders like to do, get out on our lakes, boating, bushwalks, etc. So we all have that connection back into the landscape. Over time, we've seen quite a, a change, I think, in the way people view the landscape. And there's a lot of confusion and different understandings of that environment um, and people unsure where to get the information they need. So that connection, again, between science and people is critical. So just to continue the discussion about everything's connected, I'd now like to talk about the connections in the landscape. So in Southland we're really fortunate we have many different types of environment, uh, the full range from mountains to the sea, ki uta katai. Um, we have special challenges in the region, um, our high rainfall which we're getting to experience um, causes some unique things and as many of you will know the um, lowland part of Southland has an extensive drainage network underpinning it which has been needed so that we can get the waters away when it rains and maintain productive potential um, but that's also a very good way for contaminants to travel through the landscape quickly and the loss of wetlands that those um, tile drains tile and pipe drains replace um, has also resulted in a loss of associated ecosystem services and buffering etc um, one of the key challenges that I've been doing a wee of thinking about lately is we have um, sensitive estuaries at the bottom of most of our main stems and there can be quite a distance between where people are undertaking an activity and the estuary for example. So someone may live kilometres, tens of kilometres away from where you're seeing the impact of that activity. So making those connections and helping people to understand what they're doing in one place will be affecting another place. Um, Environment Southland has been trying to increase its capacity around systems thinking, so rather than just looking at one component of the system, looking at the whole system. And we'll hear some talks about that today. So now I want to talk about the evolution and disciplines we've seen over the last four years. The pictures that um, Janet Hodgetts has um, kindly produced for us will be familiar to a number of you because many of you have been involved in this process and are a representation of the Southland Economic Project and the Southland Science Programme. So during the last four years we have had significant knowledge advancements in all the areas that I'll talk about. Both the Southland Economic Project and the Science Programme were developed to respond primarily to water issues um, and also thinking about how we might best build the knowledge base for the national policy statement and the processes we need to undertake there. But today we'll be talking about biodiversity, about air quality as well as all those things are linked. And when the initial thinking was being done about these programmes, we realised that we couldn't do this on our own. We needed to strengthen our connections with research partners, with the community. And we're really fortunate that a lot of you here got on board with us and the council has invested really heavily, as I said, over the last four years. So with that additional resourcing from the council, with everyone coming on board, we've been able to achieve a great deal more than we would have been able to achieve without partners. Now, just to run through, so the Southland Economic Project, which Emma Moran will be talking about, about today, was basically set up to understand the economic consequences of different policy choices. Then we have the characterisation programme, the Southland Science Programme, so trying to characterise the region's natural systems to build that knowledge base um, for informing processes like people, water and land, but it's also a resource that will take us um, into the future and other areas as well. So we had four components to that program. First of all, land use inputs. <coughs> yeah, which is basically about understanding where contaminants are coming from and when. Then we had fluxes and flows. 
which is about how those contaminants and water move through the system and what quantities. Then we had an ecosystem response component, so understanding how our ecosystems are responding. We had four sub-themes there around lakes, estuaries, freshwater and human health. And lastly, the physiographics of Southland, which was about understanding spatial variation and water quality. So obviously, as all that work was being done, we had a growth in knowledge. And there are two things I'd like you to take away, if nothing else, from me today. Firstly, that is, is that one about the connection with people and the wider landscape and science. And secondly, where you might be able to access some of the knowledge that's been built up over the last four years. So in your booklets that I hope all of you have, there is a bibliography. And we also have um, an updated link in through our website to source all of those reports. Um, obviously, we are presenting posters and videos today and all that information and the recordings from today will be on the website as well. The um, presentations, the posters and the videos from today are really just a snapshot of the overall program. Um, so you do have a browse on our website, see what else is there, and if there are things of particular interest, make sure you connect in with the team here. So now turning to integration of disciplines. So while we've had that knowledge um, growth um, and development in many individual disciplines, we've also seen um, our understanding improve through the integration of disciplines. And that's helping us build an integrated multidisciplinary picture. Some of the projects and work streams were developed from the very start to be integrative. Um, so the Southland Economics Project, for example, was very much in that space because economics by its nature is an integrative discipline. Others evolved from quite a narrow starting point, so I'm thinking of, in particular of the stream bank erosion project, which we'll hear about today, and that expanded to a much broader focus, so um, Tim Ellis will be taking us through that. Um, other examples of where we've integrated disciplines include the Physiographics of Southland project, so that brings together learnings from fields like chemistry, geology, hydrology, and weaves together a integrated story. As has been touched on already, we're also looking at how we can connect the work that we've been doing with other knowledge. So knowledge out in the community, knowledge such as Mataranga Māori, and we're really thrilled to have Jane and Dean speaking this evening about some of the um, cultural monitoring and Mataranga Māori work being done in the region. And I think I have uh, borrowed from you, Dean. I've got the, the same whakatauki, and it does um, say it all, so that Pulling all that information together will help us as we go forward. So now turning to the symposium themes, which are value, change and people. And those cut across, we believe, all of the disciplines that I've touched on, all of the different work streams that have been underway. And as I um, touched on, we've got a, a range of presentations, videos and um, posters outside. But they're all organised under those themes. So you'll see them under particular headings, but be aware that many of the topics cut across themes and actually relate in many spaces. Value is basically all about how we get best bang for buck. Um, and then change is understanding the environmental change that has occurred over time and what might happen in future. And people um, is about how we better inform our community. Right, so just drilling into each of those themes in a little bit more detail, I'll start with value and arguably data has value um, regardless of how you set it up and sometimes it might have value now and then it has additional value in future um, that you don't actually appreciate at the time you collect it but it comes in valuable down the track. However, we do want to try and focus our efforts and get the most effective and efficient data that we can. And that's the underlying um, question, I guess, for all of the six presentations that we'll hear about um, over the next hour or so. 
we've got two sub themes. The first of these is data worth, and I'm not going to talk about all the speakers, but just to give you a bit of an example, Roger Hudson's our first speaker this morning, and he's going to talk about ensuring that the information we gather is fit for purpose and how the Purified and Monitoring Network's been redesigned to achieve that. And then in the other work stream, which is that of integration, we have um, already touched on how if we combine information, combine data and techniques from one discipline with data and techniques from another discipline, we get a much fuller picture and that's again more adds value. Um, so the first talk in that space this morning is by Dr Kieran Roberts and it's all about how we combine a state of the environment monitoring data with observations of land use and land management practice um, and across organisational response. So this was people from across Environment Southland to some water quality, ecological health issues in one of our coastal lakes. So the second theme for this symposium is change. Now we all know change is inevitable, change is always going to occur, but understanding those changes is complex and something that we really need. Um, for example, we really need to know what's going to occur naturally versus what's been induced by people. Um, when we're thinking about where we go from here, so in those conversations with our community about what the future might look like and what our choices are. And the better that we understand change, the better the knowledge base for basing decisions on. So we, again, we've got two sub-themes here, and under environmental gradients, we have a um, talk first up by Nick Ward, which is about some of the work we've done in our estuary space the photo you can see there is of New River Estuary, which many of you would have seen as you flew in either this morning or last night. Um, it's got its um, challenges and Nick will touch on those, but the ecological condition gradient that has been developed for this estuary and our other estuaries helps us characterise where our estuaries are along a gradient. So what is the state compared to another estuary? And it also gives us a way of corresponding relating that um, state or condition with nutrient and sediment loads. And then we have another couple of talks in that space as well. The sub-theme of resilience um, has a talk <coughs> first up by Chris Jenkins, which is on the Wai uh, sorry, the Waituna Lagoon modelling project. So that has helped us um, characterise or understand seasonal and annual variability in lagoon levels and it can help us looking forward by simulating what change might occur in those levels with scenarios such as climate change. So the final theme is people, and I've already talked quite a bit about people, but um, obviously connecting with our community, helping inspire behaviour change is fundamental going forward. Now, this um, photo, and Roger will be sick of me mentioning him, um, is of Roger, who is a surface water quality scientist, out with a catchment group having a conversation about the local river. So, and we are lucky to have Sarah Fawn with us today, and some of the catchment group members actually um, coming along this afternoon, I think. But these groups have been in establishing in Southland over the last three or four years. There are now 17 in the region, um, with six more, Sarah told me this morning, in the formation phases. And there are groups of people coming together to look at water issues and thinking about how they might respond. And connecting with those groups, sharing the information we hold, um, sourcing the information the community holds, identifying the knowledge gaps, the community questions, is really going to help us with co-developing our science going forward and also with finding the solutions for some of the issues that are being looked at. And there's a really strong desire amongst those groups to undertake their own monitoring to see how effective the work that they're doing is. And that's another uh, topic that I think Roger's going to cover um, during the symposium today. So I talked a little bit about how our research partners um, have helped with undertaking the work we've done so far. And Graham's highlighted the change from 
um, Environment Southland Science Strategy to Southland Science Inc. But connecting with each other and out with the community is really what's going to take us forward in terms of identifying and delivering the science needs of the region. So again, we've got six presentations under this theme and two sub-themes. So with the Building Connections sub-theme, Emma Moran will talk about the Southland Economic Project. So that studied the connections between people and place, as well as a whole lot of other factors. And that was done, obviously, with the underlying connections between stakeholders and a number of individuals. And it's also recognised, though, that just making the connections is not going to be enough on its own. How do we actually influence behaviour change? So our first speaker under the second sub-theme of behavioural change is Owen West, who is going to be talking about some exciting work that's underway in the air quality space, looking at those drivers of behaviour change. So this brings us back to the overarching picture for the day and what we're going to be taking you through shortly. We've been really looking forward to sharing the results. It's been a long four years and um, great to have the opportunity today to, to put some of the findings out there. And I'm really proud of the work the team's put in, not just over the last uh, little while, but over the longer term to get us where we are today. And we'd also like to acknowledge the contributions that many of you have made to this um, work as well. We hope you enjoy the day. Um, I'd encourage you all to get involved. We've got discussion sessions at the end of each of the three themes. And we're really keen to hear your feedback, to hear your thoughts about what you've heard. And we hope you feel motivated to contribute. So we look forward to today and your continued involvement going forward. Thank you.